Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. We are almost done. This is the third of the final uh, catch-up episodes for the Q&As that we missed over the summer. I wanted to make sure that we got some of the best um, questions answered uh, on the shows and get that stuff out there. Before we get started, I just want to thank, uh, let's pick, uh, pick them out of the hat, uh, both Patricks, both of the Patricks who are Patreon supporters. They help make these shows possible, like literally, they donate a couple bucks a month, and you can too, uh, to help us with the show's production budget, expansion, and all that cool stuff. Patreon.com slash Smarter Home Life. A dollar, literally like a dollar a month, literally goes a long way. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show. Um, but they help make the show possible, and that's fantastic. So thank you guys. Thank to Thank you to everyone. And thank you, um, the people who I'm about to answer your question, for uh, writing in, <laughs> like, you sent an email in an envelope. Not really. Anyways, whether it's comments or questions uh, sent to questions at smarterhomelife.com, I will get it. I will respond to you, usually quickly online first. And then if your question is one of the better ones that makes sense to put in a Q&A episode, then it will land right here on the show. And I will literally respond to it reading your question. So uh, without further ado, let's move forward. Um, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of your name, so I will try it multiple ways. Uh, Donnie Hahn, Donny Hohn, uh, not sure. Anyways, he uh, or she is uh, coming from France. Hi, very good video. Uh, they're commenting on the video that was about easy home automation with Zuli smart plugs. We'll put a link to it um, in the show notes and in the uh, the episode right now. Very good video. Thank you for that. Um, but having a lot of smart plugs at home, I find this technology a lot more intrusive. Someone could use this technology to track your activity at home. I know that in the US a lot of people would love it, but over here in France, a system that could locate you at home would look very suspicious even for the authorities, I think. And that, of course, is on the minds of everyone, at least in the industry, and some of us who watch the industry and report on it. And of course, the consumers who are thinking about buying these things or have them and are worried about security and privacy and all of those topics in the Orwellian you know, um, society of 1984. So the question is, can people monitor your stuff uh, at home? Can they monitor your lighting? Can they check to see whether you're home or not? The answer is, if your stuff is connected to the internet, generally, let's just say generally, if you're connected to the internet, generally anything can be hacked. Anything can be, um, uh, anything can be vulnerable, let's just say that. Um, and especially when you add devices to your network, to your home, from manufacturers that aren't well known, that maybe haven't gone through uh, rigid security checks, even manufacturers that are well known still have problems because there are hackers out there. There's the good hackers. There are there are the good hackers out there that are literally just trying this stuff, trying to do assessments, trying to get into these systems just to say I got in. They're not trying to cause criminal damage or usually not criminal mischief, but they're trying to get in and just see what they can do basically to, to test and then to report it, usually silently to the companies, get them to fix it before they go public with it and embarrass the companies. So there's multiple things that happen. Um, I have systems, I have reported on it, right? I mean, I have talked about it. I have an August Smart Lock, I have an S Thermostat, I have systems connected to the internet. I believe, because they're all updated and I have to trust the manufacturers that these systems are supposedly secure. Now, I also use good practices. I use um, email addresses that are generally forwards. Um, they're not real email addresses. They're not going to get published anywhere. Um, I use strong passwords of at least 12 characters that are, are multi-different types of uh, characters, not just A to Z. Um, and I manage all of my security and, and passwords with LastPass. And LastPass is secured ridiculously as well through multiple methods that I won't uh, that I won't name, that I won't name on the show. But anyhow, 
I use good security and I use products from known manufacturers that I feel like if everything lines up, then generally I should be okay. And aside from running this show, which I am not an A-list celebrity by any means, and I'm certainly not Marcus Brownlee, he's awesome. If you haven't seen his videos, he's, he's great, MKBHD. Um, I don't consider myself a huge target. Now, of course, tomorrow someone will, will target me and they will unlock my doors and raise or lower my thermostat or whatever they'll do. They'll just screw with me. But anyway, yes, it is absolutely possible that your, your information could be tracked. I have geolocation turned on via certain apps and so forth. Um, that do monitor my movements and and my home knows whether I'm home or not so there's there's that absolutely if 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 you're worried about it a don't buy the technology or put it behind a huge firewall and don't connect it to the internet which kind of wipes out some of your um, abilities these days but back to the original question that was targeted uh, that was commented on on the Zuli episode the Zuli smart plugs, which I should have grabbed one, um, they're wonderful devices. They are Bluetooth only, which means in general, probably you're probably safe. In fact, with Zuli, you can't even really remotely control them either. It's Bluetooth only. They want you to be in Bluetooth range. Bluetooth is a low power, short range data transmission technology. So. Generally, I think with the Zuli products, you're probably okay. But if you're really concerned about all the other types of products and control devices, yeah, that could be a problem. And so I agree with your point. This is one of these things where the internet of things and your internet connected refrigerator, your internet connected crock pot, your internet connected kitchen faucet, right? Who knows? I mean, why you would have a kitchen faucet that's connected? I don't know. but. All of these things that are out there that are becoming connected can be um, vulnerable if they're not properly secured. And even if they are secured by the manufacturer, it's still up to you to choose a, a good password and not put in um, an email address that's been owned by some, um, some person out there or some um, WikiLeaks type thing that's uh, gone out and, and sent email addresses and so forth. I mean, generally most email addresses are out there on some list anyways, but so change your passwords. People um, use good security practices. I can't, use, I can't say that more than enough on this show and I probably should say it more than enough, but if you're concerned about security, just don't connect anything to the internet. Just pull the plug, just pull the plug. That's about all I can say on that one. Um, but thank you. Uh, sir or ma'am <laughs> um, for your comment and for watching the episode. The next question requires a little bit of a adjustment, but I'll start with the question and then we'll make a, a camera adjustment and go from there. This is from Jeremiah Nielsen. I think that I got that right, hopefully. It's not Nielsen. Uh, a comment, and he was commenting about one of the Elgato episodes, our little sensors. I don't have them here because they're all deployed. There's one behind me on the bookshelf. My problem is that Elgato products, and these are little sensor devices um, that sense you know, weather, they sense indoor uh, air quality. They, um, I'm using one as a kind of a security sensor on the door back there. The Elgato products don't support push technology. I can't even have a door or window switch or sensor tell me when it is triggered and send me a message. Same with their weather station. I can ask it how it's doing, but I can't trigger it when it's freezing outside and you're correct until recently and we were having a conversation um, on the comments it is true that for a while they didn't support it but it was actually an apple problem with HomeKit. apple addressed the problem earlier this year in ios 9.3 partially <laughs> um partially for some things, fully for other things, but we don't even know how all this stuff completely is going to uh, roll out. And then early this summer, uh, Elgato and probably other manufacturers as well um, started to, to issue app updates and firmware updates to the products that we'll show you here in a second that enabled this technology. For a while, Bluetooth only, otherwise battery operated devices 
could not use triggers to trigger other things, which pretty much was everything because you wouldn't want to trigger like when a light bulb turned on, that seems silly. But a door and window sensor, wouldn't it make sense to have that trigger something, whether it's just flashing lights or something else would be helpful. The challenge is HomeKit, while it's been around for a whopping two years now, is still underdeveloped compared to home automation platforms such as SmartThings or, or Wink, or especially compared to what I use, uh, software on the Mac back there uh, called Indigo, which is very, very, very customizable and programmable. So at the end of the day, uh, Richard, Jeremiah, <laughs> Sorry, Jeremiah is complaining about that you can't even have a message sent. And that's true. Right now, it would seem that you can trigger something to happen, like a scene or a temperature change on a thermostat or, you know, just something um, tangible, but you can't have a sound play. You can't send yourself a, an email or a, or a push notification, a little message. Hey, your front door opened. Wouldn't that be helpful when you're not home? I would think so, but Apple doesn't think so at this point because it's not supported. What is supported is the following, and I need to make a little bit of a change, uh, camera angle change to get that set up. So we'll be right back. Okay, so what is supported right now with these Bluetooth only devices, and let me push back the magic curtain or one of these uh, fabric panels that hide the other door so that there's not like a weird feng shui thing with having a a bookcase in front of your door. Anyways, so this is the EV. It's hard to see on the on the thing. We don't have a, um, another camera um, set up. These are the um, the components of the Eve, um, the Elgato Eve door and window sensor. So this is HomeKit enabled. It it is upgraded so that um, it will actually trigger something to happen. Some of the lights are going to come up full. You'll see that in the camera shot. Um, but that's all it can do. It can trigger things to happen. Uh, for your home automation devices, but not a message, not a push notification, not like a, a funny, like a red alert sound or something like that. Where's that stuff, Apple? When is it coming? Tell us. So I'm gonna open this, unlock the uh, August Smart Lock, and it should trigger here within about a second. One, two, there we go. So I'm gonna close this back up. And so the lights came on to full. Uh, which is um, the everyday um, sort of everyday general uh, lighting scene and that's something that you can do obviously if it was a certain time period um, at night I could trigger um, all the Philips Hue lights to go to full and to go red and everything else to go to full to kind of like wake me up someone just broke into your house okay that's useful when you're home but if you're not home you don't want flashing lights happening you want something actually on your phone um, to tell you hey something happened so Jeremiah, I, I feel your pain. I get it. I understand it. Um, I would suggest to you, um, if you haven't upgraded um, and done the firmware updates to your Elgato devices at this time, uh, they are all updated at this point. Um, I have that confirmation from Elgato and our um, press representative there. Um, and I've, I've updated all the three that we have um, that we got from them. Uh, and all of the technology works um, as it should. But like we've, like I just said, it's up to Apple to upgrade the rest of it. Why they didn't do that in this release of uh, HomeKit, I don't know. Maybe it was too much for them to handle with the Home app coming out as well. Next year is the 10th anniversary of the iPhone itself. They may throw the rest of the, basically, you know, they may take the, the rest of the kitchen sink and throw it in there uh, at that point. But again, doing a major update once a year is just like, oh, the world moves faster than updates that come once a year. So I like Apple a lot, but sometimes it's like, give us what we want, goodness freaking gracious. So Jeremiah, I feel your pain and many other uh, people out there. If you have other products that are HomeKit um, devices that are able to send these type of kind of notifications, they call it push notifications internally to Apple, um, but really they're used as triggers um, and things such as the newer uh, August Smart Lock that works with HomeKit, uh, the Quick Set Kivo, um, not the Quick Set Kivo, um, Quick Set has other stuff, or is it the Schlage, I'm sorry, Schlage Sense, um, and other HomeKit locks, 
and devices that could have a state change that are not a light bulb um, that could send a notification. This will work once those manufacturers initiate those firmware updates and app updates because uh, Apple fixed it earlier this year. So that's the update on that. I think those are the two questions that we had. And that is it. So yay, we are done catching up with the Q&As. Um, not a huge amount of activity that made it into those um, episodes um, for the summer, and we took um, a good part of pretty much the entire month of August off for various reasons. And uh, so we are officially back here in September putting things out on a regular basis, and we'll have the next Q&A right at the beginning of October to cover this month. And we had a couple of good questions in there. Um, other stuff with uh, people have had a lot of um, good interactions with the Unomi episode, which is great. If you don't know what Unomi is, I'm kind of kind of all about it. Just in terms of people are asking all all the time about hubs and what should I buy and so forth. If you don't want to buy anything, just buy. If if you don't want to buy a home automation system, buy all the separate components and connect it all with Unomi for free. Um, which is pretty cool. Check out yunomi.co or uh, just watch our episode and you'll see all the different um, things that are available uh, or compatible with that app. I think it's a good thing that they're doing and uh, they'll probably eventually wind up with some competition, but it's not an easy thing that they're doing, so that's probably why they're the only ones doing it right now. That's yunomi.co. It's a free app, it's iOS, it's Android, and it's a home automation controller. So that's the end of the content for the episode. Again, thank you to our wonderful uh, patrons, contributors, whatever you want to call them. Michael, both Patricks, Richard, Christian, John, Sean, and Jim. They've been contributing a couple bucks a month. And I would love to see that expand because I would love to see the shows expand. This is a good portion, um, or at least the shows take up a good portion of the time that I spend every month working, quote unquote. Um, and I do a number of different things to quote unquote pay the bills. And this is this show makes up part of that. And I would like the show to grow to be almost or perhaps my full-time job. And the ads make up a certain portion of it, and the rest of it can be made up through your contributions. The old joke is for all the 5,500 subscribers that we had, if each one donated a dollar or contributed, I hate donate, I hate that word, don't like that word for the show. If everyone contributed a dollar a month, which translates to like 25 cents or less per show, um, we'd be doing pretty well. Uh, that would that would cover everything and then some. But not everyone contributes. Some people just like free content on YouTube and they watch some ads or they have ad blockers and if that's, if that's your thing, that's your thing, and I can't change your mind. But if you like this kind of content, if you like me producing it, if you want to see me produce more of this type of content in the future as well on other topics related to all this technology, lighting, and home automation stuff, then please become a um, patron over at patreon.com slash smarter home life. That is the, I will stop talking about that. Otherwise, please subscribe, please share it with your friends, and of course, please comment and send in your questions to questions at smarterhomelife.com. They can be on anything that we cover, anything around the smarter home, and we're going to start covering a couple other little um, related topics in uh, the coming months as well. Weird stuff, but it all re revolves the smarter home, making your home more intelligent, a little bit more uh, Smarter, that doesn't sound right. Anyways, more smart, uh, more you know, making your home smarter, more livable, and a great place to be, especially in certain certain parts of the country. You're gonna be living in, in your home a lot more because it's gonna be winter. Out here in Phoenix, we love to live outside in the winter and the fall because it's not 115 degrees outside. But anyways, that's it. I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.